Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a background or it's also called a skin for your classroom. If you don't have the school subscription, then you do not have access to the pre-made skins that Classin has available. So you would have to create your own. So I'm going to show you what a skin is or what the backgrounds look like. So they would be saved to your class and drive just like any other file that you have. And when you open it, you will notice that it fills your entire classroom. Also, if I was to write and scroll down, you notice that the skin stays. It does not move with you scrolling down. That's why it's called a skin because it's actually a part of your classroom like a skin. So when I first joined with class in and I learned about the skins, I of course asked them how we can create our own and they were nice enough to give me the directions of how to make them. These are the directions that they gave me. When I looked at this and read through it, it was like reading a foreign language. I had no idea what I was supposed to do. But luckily, my husband is able to understand this language and he was able to figure out how to make the skin and he was able to teach that to me and now I'm going to teach it to you. And it's actually pretty easy to do once you know how to do it. So just ignore these directions and I will walk you through the steps to make your own classroom skin. So the first step is to simply choose an image. So you want to keep in mind what you want for your classroom, how you're using your space. Even though I use PowerPoints for my lessons, so that takes up a lot of my space in my classroom, I do often have the student or I write on the slides or on the screen. So I want this space here to be pretty clear and open and not too dark of a color. So if I'm writing or my student is writing, it's easy for us to see it. Also, you don't want it to be something that's going to be distracting to the student. I like to keep it a little bit simple, basic, but also visually appealing. So when you find an image, you can find the image anywhere that you find pictures or backgrounds. So I just went to a Google search and I'm going to use a Christmas background as an example. So I just typed in Christmas border because I know that it's going to give me images where I have an open, clear middle part of the picture. You can type any type of keywords that you want to find something that works for you. So here I'm going to just save my image that I'm going to use to create my skin. So to do that, I'm just going to right click, save image as, and since this is just a temporary file that I need, I'm just going to save it on my desktop so it's easy for me to find. And I'm going to name it Christmas Background and save. So now I have saved that image. So let me put in here the steps that we're doing. So first, find and save an image. Okay, so that's my first step. Now that I have my image, I'm going to move it up here just so I can show you that along with the next step. Now I have to resize this image because that's the key to making the skins. It has to fit perfectly into the classroom for it to save. So there might be multiple ways to do this, I don't know, but the way that we found was to use paint. So I'm just going to use my paint app. I'm going to open that and I need to put my image into the paint app. So there's two ways to do that. I can just drag the image or I can go to file, open and just find the file that you save to your back to your desktop. So now I have my image, but it's not the correct size. If you look down here, it tells you the size is 1024 by 576. There is a very specific size that the image has to be to save and use as a skin. And I will show you here. So first I'm going to go to resize right here. And now I have my options. First, you need to change it to pixels. Once you change it to pixels, I want to uncheck maintain aspect ratio. 
I need to uncheck that because once I type in my first number, it might change, or the second number, it might change my first number. So I'm going to uncheck, and then I'm going to change my first number. And this is very important. It needs to be these two specific numbers, 1280 as horizontal and 720 as vertical. So look at this again. So we need pixels, uncheck, maintain aspect ratio, horizontal 1280, vertical 720. And then I'm going to click OK. This is going to change the size of my image to match those dimensions. Boom. Now it's bigger because I needed a bigger aspect ratio here. So my image is now the correct size. Now I'm going to resave the image with the correct size. So I'm just going to go File, Save As. I'm going to keep it on my desktop. Already exists, do you want to replace it? Yes, because I need to replace it with the correct size. And now it is saved. And it just moved back down here. So here is my background with the correct size, but I am not done because if I was to put this image in my classroom, it does fill the screen, but notice it doesn't fill the top part of the screen. And if I scroll down, it disappears because it's not a part of my classroom. It's not a skin. It's just an image that I copied and pasted into the classroom. And that is not what we want to do. So I'm going to delete that. Okay, so now let's go to, let me put in my second step. So second, we're going to resize the image in paint. And the size needs to be, we need to use pixel 1280 by 720 and un check, I think it was aspect ratio, I think was the word. So now I save new image. Okay, so we have the first three steps done. Now I need to turn this image that I created up here into a file that turns it into a skin. This is very simple. All I have to do is right click, rename, and then I'm going to go to the end, erase the JPEG, JPG, and rename it, E-D-T. That's what the file is that makes a skin. So dot E-D-T and enter. It's going to say, if you change a file name extension, the file might become unusable. Are you sure you want to change it? Yes. Notice when I do this, it changes the image. It doesn't show the image anymore because I changed the file type. That is fine. So after I save new image, I want to rename .edt. Okay, now, my file is complete. Now I can save this file that I created up here into class in. I could just drag it into class in or I can save it to my drive here. So either way, we'll save the file. So let's see if it works. I'm going to drag my image and drop it in here and let's see what happens. Dun, da, da, da. Now my skin has changed to my Christmas background. So now let's see if I scroll down. Notice my words move, but my background stays. I'm able to write, scroll down, write, scroll down, and the background is still there. So now I have created my Christmas background or my Christmas skin. And whenever you do that, it should save it. Yep. So if you drag an image or drag your EDT, your background, 
into the classroom, it automatically saves it into your drive. So my classroom background.edt. So after I rename, let's add my last step, renamed it as edt, upload or drag into class in. And you are done. It's very simple. Once you do it one time, you can do it easily multiple times with any images that you want. But keep in mind, you will have to load it every time you enter a classroom. So if you go to teach a class, you will have to go into your drive, click on it and load it into your classroom. Then if you have a second class, you'll have to reload that EDT file, your background skin, into the classroom every single time. But very simple to do. I hope this helps everybody create all the skins that they want and use in the classroom. If you have any questions about how I made that, just let me know. Bye everyone.